Amen and amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Go with me to Numbers 14 tonight. And uh, we're going to continue with this, if you will believe, part two. And uh, we started this morning, if you will believe, part one. And we're looking at this word that the Lord gave us for 2022. And uh, if you don't have it, you can get a copy of it in the, in the foyer uh, on the uh, 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 desk out there. But what we focused on this morning were these first two things that the Lord said. He said there would be people in the body of Christ that give their minds and thoughts over the information that the world and ungodly sources continue to pour out. And that many will begin to lose hope and even begin to speak like the world and say there's no hope. Nothing will ever change. And those things which they speak will be established to them and they'll lose hope and give up. Notice what it says. They'll give their thoughts and their mouth. And they would lose hope and give up. And what they say would be established to them. And I'm not going to take the time. Numbers 13, you'll remember uh, Numbers 14. The Lord said to the children of Israel, He said, you tell them as they have spoken in my ears, that's how it's going to be. But at the end of six days of faith this past year in this location, the Lord said to us at the end of that meeting, in a very strong prophetic utterance, the Lord said this. He said, as you have believed, as you have spoken, that's how it's going to be. If, if you remember that. Amen. Now, people will say, well, are you saying I can't listen to the news or whatever? Listen, that's not my place to tell you what you can listen to or not listen to. But here, here's what I'm saying. What you give your attention to is what's going to have the stronghold in your life. And I'm just going to say this. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, a political preacher, meaning that I don't take a lot of time focusing on, I don't preach the headlines. But here's what I am going to say. How many times do you have to have somebody lie to you before you quit listening? How many times does somebody have to be wrong before you figure out they don't know what they're talking about? You know, there's a lot of good things going on. You know, our governor in Kansas just signed and, and, and our uh, 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 House of Representatives had an emergency session that they are not cooperating with the president's vaccine mandate. And our governor, who everybody ran down because she's a Democrat, said, I'll sign it. And she said to the White House, we're not listening to you because what you said before was wrong and then what you said the second time was wrong. So chances are what you're saying now is wrong. And so our state has said, we're not cooperating. You can't lose your job because you won't get vaccinated. And I'm not vax or anti-vax. That's not the point. The point that I'm making is, look, there's some good things going on. And if you do lose your job, they can't withhold unemployment benefits from you. Now, people say, why is that important? There's good things going on. But if you listen to the news, if you listen to the world's sources, there's nothing good going on. We have the greatest opportunity, the highest probability ever, that we will see Roe v. Wade overturned in our lifetime. You realize that? We will probably see that in our lifetime. But if the church listens to the same thing the world listens to, and they react the same way, they'll think the same way. You are not allowed to panic. Amen. Don't panic. I see so many people in the church panicking. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let, let's, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to believe God. Yeah. We're just going to act like the word is true. Yeah. Isn't that right? In the middle of a pandemic. When everything shut down. Last 2020. 2020 
was the best year ever for our ministry financially. Amen. There are people sitting in under the sound of my voice. You bought houses in 2020. Uh, by the way, a house you weren't supposed to be able to get. But are you living there? Because God said, I will give you houses that you didn't build. Houses that you don't qualify for. This is important. But when you start giving your mind and your thoughts to what the world's putting out, people say, well, I've got to know what's going on. Okay, but define that. Going on in the kingdom or going on in the world? Jesus said there would be all kinds of things going on in the world. What did he say your job was? See to it that you're not troubled. We're not done with turmoil. Because the, the word that the Lord gave us, notice what it said. It said, dissatisfaction and disillusionment will prevail in the mind and lives of many. Amen. It said that, that, that uh, uh, the world will continue to look to man as their source even as the arm of the flesh fails. They will hold fast to man and men as the answer only to find that their trust in man is futile and will always end up in disappointment and frustration. So there's going to be people in the world that keep looking to man as their source. You better believe God in 2022 and don't get caught putting your hope in 2024. Because there are things that you can just try to hold, that you can just try to weather and end up losing. Amen. The answer has never been the political system. We've had good presidents and worse presidents. The answer is not, is there a Republican in the White House? Or should I say a donkey or an elephant in the White House? Because God is not Democrat or Republican. God's not even American. He loves America. He loves any nation. Right? He loves all nations. The answer is in what do you believe? So, so you can't give your thoughts to that. Because what you think is how you'll start seeing and then that's how it will be. And, and don't get caught up in all the narratives. And start vax, anti-vax. All these different things. That, that's a distraction. I'm going to tell you flat out. You do whatever you want. You do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. I've had people say, I wouldn't take that vaccine for nothing. I've had people say that. And when it got bad enough, they were asking for it. You understand why, why I'm saying that? Were you led by the Holy Spirit not to get it? If you were led by the Holy Spirit not to do it, then good, you're safe. If you weren't led by the Holy Spirit and you're just operating out of your mind, where's the information coming from that you're hearing? Can, can't you see that, that, that the world twists things? The very group now that is saying the vaccines are the answer are the group that a little over a year ago or two years ago were saying, I wouldn't put anything in my body that was developed under this administration. But now the vaccine that was developed under that administration, they're saying it's the answer. Amen. The world is twisted. Amen. Did, do you see that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, pastor, are you vaccinated? Well, if I say yes, what are you going to think? If I say no, what are you going to think? Right. You don't make your decisions based on what I do. Right. You make your decisions based on what you see in the Word of God and what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
That is good preaching, isn't it? Amen. This is so important. If, if, if you choose to go down tomorrow and get vaccinated, that's no problem. And don't listen to people who say you're not believing God if you do. Most time people that say that don't know anything about believing God anyway. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. That's important. It's important. Because you start listening to the world. Now, is that the answer? No. What, 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 what's the answer? He will keep me. No plague will come near my dwelling. Amen. And we heard testimonies tonight of the plague that tried to come on people, but they just ran it off. Amen. Why? It can't stay. It can, something in you, in your spirit, you have already been vaccinated with the healing power of 1 Peter 2.24. And when it tries to come on you, something in your spirit will rise up and work against it. And getting a shot is not going to stop that. Well, I believe there are more sinister implications to that shot. Might be the mark of the beast. You need to read your Bible. It can't be the mark of the beast because we're still here. See, Christians have a bad problem of being knee-jerk, knee-jerk reactions to things. Well, you know, uh, all that, that vaccine, that's, a, that's all made with aborted fetal tissue. The strain that that vaccine was made from, it, uh, that strain originated so many years ago that there's no viable tissue left in the strain. There are people sitting under the sound of my voice that you have medical treatments that have stem cells in it. I'm not just trying to justify something. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit. you got to agree with God. Amen. Amen. Do you see that? And don't get put under condemnation because somebody looks at you funny because you got a vaccine card. Amen. And don't think you're superior if you don't have one. The Bible says if you have faith, have it to yourself. That's important. Amen. Well, what if they say this? Be led. Well, what if they say this? Be led. Right. What's the answer to a thousand and one questions? Be led. Hallelujah. That's the answer. Glory to God. Am I helping you so far? So, then he said, and we're not going to take the time to go through all this. In the second part of that word, he said seven times. He used the phrase, if they will believe. And he said there would be different things that we would see in 2022 if we would believe. It would be a year of beautiful clarity. Here's one, a year of astounding abundance. If we will believe. Now that's my introduction. And so I've just got a few minutes. <laughs> Numbers 14, verse 11. Now, remember we talked this morning about how they thought and how they spoke. Now, let's add something else to it here. Notice something else. <clears throat> verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? Do you see that? For all the signs that have been showed among them. Now, I'm not going to take time to go through all the signs, but there were uh, ten signs in Egypt that decimated a nation, right? Uh, there was the sign of, of the Egyptians paying them to leave. There was a sign of the Red Sea splitting, the pillar of fire burning all night long until the ground dried out so they could go across on dry ground. That was the seabed. You can imagine how wet it was. So there's a twofold miracle. Number one, that it dried out, and number two, that it only took a night to do it. 
the, right? Then they come out of there, and a day later, one day later, they start complaining because they don't have any water. One day after they're delivered. And what's God do? He brings water out of a rock. And the Bible says it wasn't only water, it was rivers, it was gushing. The Bible says the, the desert flowed with rivers. Oh, we're hungry, we're tired of this manna. So God sent quail flying one foot off the ground. And the Israelite that gathered the least gathered six 50-gallon drums worth of quail. Mm. Isn't that great? Sent a pillar of fire with them by night and a cloud by day. You know, sometimes we hear that and we look at and we think there's this little pillar that went before them. No, they're in the desert. It's cold at night. That fire was all around them. It was keeping them warm. It was keeping them comfortable. It was, it was a type and a figure and a shadow of the Holy Spirit that comes to lead us and guide us and direct us and comfort us. Glory to God. And a pillar of cloud by day. That wasn't a little pillar that went before them. You'll see paintings and you'll see all these Israelites and they all look wore out. And there's a little wisp of cloud up in front of them that they're following. That's not what it was. It's hot in the desert during the day. The sun's beating down. He was a cloud over three and one half million people. Protecting them from the sun. The Bible says that the man that doesn't trust in God is like a little scrubby bush in the desert. The sun beats down on it and it withers and dies. But it says the man that is blessed is the righteous man that God covers. All these miracles. And then they get to the border of the promised land and they won't believe God. And God said, they're provoking me. How long will it be till they believe me? Because of all the miracles I did. You know, even if you didn't testify tonight, you should never not believe God just because of what you heard tonight. If, if I didn't crack the word and say one scripture... What these men and women testified about tonight should be enough for you to say, yep, God will do it for me too. I believe God. Everything you believe about God, you started believing because you read somewhere that God did it for somebody else. You believed you could be saved because somebody told you you could be. You believed you could be filled with the Holy Ghost because you believed somebody told you that you could be. You believed God would heal you because somebody else told you that God would. And what happened? What you believed is what happened. But isn't it funny? You've never got anything you didn't believe. Amen. He said, how long will it be? The Amplified Bible says, how long will it be before they believe me Trust in, rely on, and cling to me. How long will it be? Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that? How long will it be before they believe me, trusting in, relying on, and clinging to me? That's a good place to say, I trust in, I rely on, and I cling to God. Amen. Amen. Notice Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Notice Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, the understood answer there is no. They cannot. Now, I don't know if you've been listening to, to Pastor Michelle's message on agreeing with God. But she's like in part eight. It's the most phenomenal message I've ever heard. And uh, I told her I was going to use that verse tonight. But notice, if you're going to walk together as one, you have to agree. You have to agree with God. What was the issue with Caleb and Joshua? They agreed with God. 
God said they could take the land. And Caleb stilled the people and said, let's go up at once and possess it because we're well able to take the land. See, God said they were well able. God said they could. God said it was possible. They said it's not possible. You always disagree with God to your own detriment. To disagree with God is to assure failure. Well, I can't see how. That doesn't mean that that is no reason to get into disagreement. There's a lot of things that you're not going to be able to see how. When Abraham was 75 years old, he couldn't see how God was going to give him a child through Sarah. Because Sarah was barren and had been for all her life. She came into Abraham's life when she was 18 years old. And she was barren then. Amen. And she was about 10 years younger than Abraham. So at 75, she's 65. Well, even today, if, some, if God came to a, a man that was 75 and his wife was 65, and he said, I'm going to give you a son through your wife, that man, listen, if that man knows anything about biology, he's going to think, I don't see how that can happen. But if God said it, just because you can't see how it can occur is no reason or grounds for you to not believe it. What's your job? Agree with God. Say it out loud. I agree with God. God. Say it one more time. I agree with God. God. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor, I agree with God. God. See, this is important. Because they wouldn't agree with God, and God called it unbelief. The Bible calls unbelief evil. If you want to be real honest about it, the Bible calls unbelief sin. Amen. I've had people say, well, it's honest unbelief. Well, it might be honest unbelief, but it's, it's still sin. <laughs> it's still evil. Do, do you see that? They wouldn't agree. And Amos said... You can't walk together if you don't agree. What's the number one component in a marriage? Agreement. Right? Right? You, right? You're, you're always in agreement. You walk in agreement. If there's a, a place of contention, you stop until you can agree. That, I didn't say give in. Agree. 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 See, agreement is not you always giving up so the other person won't get mad. you got to find a place of agreement. That's the only way you can walk together. Amen. I've had people over the years say, what's the secret to a happy marriage? And, and they look for me to say roses and candy and clothes and love. And, and that's all true. Agreement. Walk in agreement. Amen. When you lose agreement... You lose power. When you get out of agreement, right, you lose power. Glory to God. So if you want a happy marriage, agree. Agree quickly. This is important. Because that, that, that's how you'll walk together. You, you work for a place of agreement with, where the children are concerned. You work uh, to a place of agreement about things. Oh, glory. That that question is so important. This is what I think. Do you agree? Well, what if they disagree? Then you work on it until you can agree. There are a lot of parents that that, that (laughs) you'll hear people say, don't ever disagree in front of your children. You'll always disagree in front of your children if you don't walk in agreement regularly. Amen. Can two walk together except they be agreed? No. Can I do what God wants me to do? Can I see what God wants me to see if I don't walk in agreement? No. Can't. 
Hallelujah. Look in, in Luke 1, Luke chapter 1. This is, uh, whew, this is good stuff. Agreement. That's why you agree with God quickly. There might even be times you say, Lord, I don't see that. I don't understand that, but I agree. Amen. When the Lord started talking to us about coming out of debt, I didn't see how it could happen. But I just agreed. My wife just agreed. Let, let me share this with you. I was driving around town the other day thinking about this. And I was, I was uh, driving over where we used to live. And uh, 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 I was going somewhere and I had to take a certain route. And it was a route that me and my wife were walking one day. We were going up to the, uh, to the uh, uh, fitness center that was over here. And uh, we were, she was getting ready to go on TV. And when God told us to go on TV... We were having trouble paying our mortgage. God told us to go on TV in 2008, 2009. During that period of time, I had some people get upset in the church, leaders that left and took $3,000 a week out of the church. Add it up. That's $12,000 a month. It's a big hit. Well, you got paid staff. You can't take their check away. So what do you do? You quit taking a check. Because I'm believing God. You, you see what I'm saying? There are times God asks you to do things, and it doesn't look like the right time. Your jobs agree with what he said. Because what does provision follow? The plan. If I don't go on TV, I don't see the provision. And God doesn't just bring the provision for the television program. He brings the provision because of the obedience. Hallelujah. Do you see that? Luke chapter 1. Verse 34, then said Mary the angel, how shall this be, seeing I do not know a man? How am I going to get pregnant? How am I going to have a child, seeing I don't know a man? I've never been intimate with a man. And the angel answered and said to her, he explained it, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, the power of the highest will overshadow you. That holy thing which shall be born of you will be called the Son of God. Whew. Hallelujah. Verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, hang on. I skipped a verse for a reason. He's about to show her the impossible. How? how? Verse 36. Behold, your cousin Elizabeth has conceived a son in her old age. And it's the sixth month with her who was called barren. So he's saying, I'm telling you something impossible is going to happen. But I'm also showing you proof that something impossible has already happened. Did you hear some testimonies tonight? Yeah. You might be facing something that looks impossible, but I'm telling you something impossible has already happened. Right? right? right. Notice what Mary said. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Notice what she, what she do. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? What she say? Be it unto me according to your word. I agree. I agree. Well, the Lord said 2022 was going to be a year of beautiful clarity. What? He said it was going to be a year of astounding abundance. He said it was going to be a year that you were paid back for all the pain you suffered in 2020. He said there were going to be services full of the glory of God. Ah, he said there were going to be people coming back and giving their lives to God. Amen. People coming back to their first love. 
He said the waters were ankle deep. But they were going to be water to swim in. Hallelujah. And he said it was going to be a year for the church to display God's power. Amen. And he said, if you'll believe me, I will do great things for you. But if you'll believe me, I'll do great things through you. Oh, glory. I agree with that. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my goodness. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. And I'm, I'm going through this quickly. Because we got all year to preach on this. Amen. Amen. My record so far is 25 weeks on one subject. I don't know. We might break it this year. Amen. Matter of fact, if you add up both of the series on authority, we got nearly 40 weeks. <laughs> That's why my wife calls me the sermonator. <laughs> now, remember, this is the, the story where the man came. And, and please understand something. This is so important. In the day of Jesus... Have you ever noticed that in the Old Testament, you don't see any devils cast out? None. Were there demon-possessed people? Sure there was. Saul was demon-possessed. Remember when the Bible says that Jesus was in the temple, and there was a man there with an unclean spirit? And he called out and said, what have we to do with thee? Jesus, Son of the Most High God. And it says, Jesus said, hold your peace and come out of the man. And what did it say? That they thought, we've never seen it like this. Even the devils obey him. Amen. They, they, casting out demons was not common practice. If you had a demon, it's hopeless. Right. So he's got a hopeless situation. See, this explains why the man said what he said. The disciples said we can, we could, the man said they could not cast him out. That was not right. Two chapters previous, Matthew chapter 10, they had been given power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out. They had the authority. What's the problem? They didn't agree with God. Amen. Amen. Mm. So that's the background. Verse 22, talking about his son. Oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Notice this. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Mm. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Other translations say that are, are a little better for us. Jesus said to him, as for these words of yours, if you are able. Now see, the religious world doesn't say that anymore. They say, if it's your will. It's the same difference. And Jesus says, as for these words of yours, if you are able... All things are possible to the one who believes. Is that right? Another translation says, the Living Bible, the New Living says, what do you mean if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. Oh, glory. Now, in our circles, we'll say, people will say things like that. Anything's possible if you just believe. Now, present company excluded. But how many people do you know that really believe anything is possible if they just believe? I'll tell you how many you know. Very few. Very few. Because most people that you know have been so religiously indoctrinated that they believe God has some reason for them not having it. 
that God has some purpose in that sickness, that God has, right? God must love poor people. He made enough of us. Ha, ha, ha. It's not funny. They think God has some reason in poverty and some, some reason to humble, and, and it's more humble to be poor. When all things are possible to the one that believes. Now, wait a minute. To the one that what? So what's Jesus saying? I'm a believing one. All things are possible to me. And that explains why the man said, Lord, I believe you. I believe that all things are possible to you. And where I can't believe, help me. Do you see what he did first? He agreed. I believe all things are possible to you. And if there's somewhere I don't believe, help me. Help my unbelief. See, that, that's what you've got to do. Lord, I believe everything you said. And even if there's something I have a problem with, help me with it and I'll believe it. Amen. Glory to God. Do you see that? So how many things are possible? All. To who? The what? So he said seven times to us in that word, if they will believe. So shout out loud, I will believe. I am a believing one. I'm telling you, you got to get this because there's some impossible things God's going to ask you to do in 2022. There's some things that you're going to look at and you're going to say, there's no way. I can't do that. You got to be a believing one and you just got to agree with God. When God looks at you and says, I'm going to do this for you, don't look at how it's going to happen. Just agree. Okay. I agree. Amen. And you might walk off thinking, I, you know, in your mind saying, how in the world is that going to happen? I, 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 do you know what you just agreed to? I do. And I, I believe God. Amen. 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 Have you ever done that before? Sign a contract or something? And your mind goes, what are you doing? And you're following God, but yet God told you to do it? <laughs> Welcome to my world. Amen. You, you got to believe God. You got to agree with God. If I told you this, would it help you? God has never failed me. I'm standing before you tonight. And telling you, God has never let me down. He's always done what he said he would do. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 9. Mm. That's a good place to look at your neighbor and say, you know what? God has never let me down. Mm. My father used to say this. He said, I've been believing at that time for 30 or 40 or 50 years. He said, I've been believing God for 50 years. Too late to stop now. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Matthew 9. Mm -mm. And the big shall occur, and the great shall occur, and the magnificent shall occur. And those things that look impossible shall be brought into the present, and you shall see that not only are they possible, they are probable. Those things that I am moving on your spirit to believe for, step out and believe me. Step out and believe me. There are many in this room tonight, the Lord says that I have spoken to you, and I've asked you to believe me for certain financial provision. I've asked you to believe me for certain things to be eradicated into your life so that you can do more with what I've given you. If you will step out and do that, the next six months will begin that time of astounding abundance. And you shall see it, and it shall be something that is noticeable. Mm. For you've entered into a season that is not comfortable for the timid. 
and not comfortable for the unbelieving and not comfortable for the doubting. Huh. But it's a season where for those that will believe, it will be as if you're riding on clouds. Whew. You will look to your right hand and to your left hand and you will see people struggling. You will see people having problems, but you will be safe. You will be cared for. You will be blessed. If you'll believe. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 9, 28. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? There's that glory of God. Notice. Do you believe? What, what's he need? Their agreement. He needs their agreement. The belief here is more than do you believe I have the power. It's do you believe I am who I say I am. The one miracle that was absolutely ascribed to the Messiah, to the anointed one, was the opening of blind eyes. That's why the man in John chapter 9, when they were confronting him in the temple, the man said he knew the word better than they did. And he said to them, he said, it's never been seen before that a man would open blind eyes. Is not this the Christ? Right? They said, what do you know? You were born in sin. Because he's born blind. And they kicked him out. He knew the word better than they knew the word. So Jesus is not only saying, do you believe I'm able? Do you believe I am who I say I am? See, it's not enough to just believe God's able. Do you believe God is who he said he was? That he's your provider. That he's your healer. That he's your keeper. That he's your way maker. Do you believe that God's who he said he is? Do you believe I'm able to do this? They said, yes, we agree. They said, yes, we believe, we agree with you. And he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. If you won't come out of agreement, you'll always receive. When you have agreed with somebody about something, whatever it is, and you know we'll stand on that scripture, Matthew 18, 19. If any two of you shall agree on earth is touching anything, it shall be done for them of our, my Father which is in heaven. When you come to somebody and you agree with that scripture, your job stay in agreement. Don't come out of agreement. Well, I mean, we're in agreement, but the doctor said, what the doctor said is no reason for you to get out of agreement. I mean, did Jesus say that or not? I've told people over the years, well, whatever you do, I know you're facing a challenge, but we agreed. Don't get out of agreement. Whatever you do, stay in agreement. Amen. <laughs> so who did he say? What did he say? It was according to what? Whose faith? What is faith? Agreement with God. How do I know God's going to bring you out? Because he said. And you agreed with it, right? Don't come out of agreement. Don't you hate it when people back out of their agreement? They say they're going to do something and they don't do it. And they might have a good reason. They might have a good excuse. When you want to get out from under the pressure, any excuse will do. And the, the, the circumstance comes to pressure you out of your agreement Amen. with God. Amen. Do, do, do you see that? Amen. There are times that you'll have something 
and you need something, and God will talk to you about giving away the something you have. See, it's real easy to say this. Well, if it's not your need, it's your seed. Well, remember that when God asks for it. Because He will. Amen. There, there, there's a man, and you may have heard of him. His name is Henry Fernandez, and he pastors in uh, South Florida. Uh, he, he's a, a, a Cuban-American and uh, pastors a wonderful church there. And he was looking at a property for $7.7 million. And he had $125,000 in the bank. And the Lord said to him this. He said, uh, what you need to do is take that $125,000. And there are three churches that you know of that are having building programs. And he said, you need to divide it up equally and give them that money. And he said, okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. You say, well, pastor, if God told me to do that, I would. Well, God is telling you right now. If it's not your need, it's your seed. Amen. And he said, I took the money and gave it and emptied out the account. Amen. A few days later, he said uh, he was uh, sitting in his, in his uh, office before church and his assistant came to him and said, there's a man that wants to talk to you. And he said, I don't normally meet with people before church, but the Lord told me to. And he said, uh, I, I went and he said, I began to talk to this man. This man looked homeless. And he said, he began to ask me, what do you believe in God for? You know, what's the, tell me about this property. And so he told him about the property. He said, okay. And the man said, okay, I'll talk to you later. Walked off. He said, I went back in the office. thought, that was weird. They said a few days later, the man called him and said, uh, uh, Pastor, he said, uh, I'd like to go look at that property with you. He said, again, I don't normally do that, but I felt led to do it. So I went. And he said, I went, and there he was. He still looked homeless. And he introduced me to, my wife, to his wife, and his wife looked worse than him. And he said, they're walking through the property and walking through this building. And the man's looking around, and he goes, $7.7 million, huh? He said, yeah. He said, okay, well, praise God. Good to talk to you, good to see you, and left. He said, a couple days later, the man called and said, Pastor, can I get your account number? And he said, I thought, I'm not going to give you my account number. And the Lord said to him, why? You don't have anything in it. <laughs> and he said, I thought, you know, he's right. I, I, there's zero in it. And he said, I gave the man my account number. And the man said, okay, in a couple of days, check your account. Two days later, he checked his account, $7.7 million in his account. Now, now, here's the thing. We hear things like that, and we shout, and we should. What was the key? Agreed with God. God said, if it's not your need, it's your seed. You can sit on what you have and never get anything more because you won't agree with God. God said... That when, when there's something you need, the way to get it is to sow a seed for it. Amen. Hmm. See, this is not just finances. What, what, what do you need? If there's a need in your life, remember that God's nature is not the miraculous. God's nature is abundance. If there's lack, it's because there's no abundance. Amen. God desires abundance in your life. Whew. So if it's not your need, it's your seed. If, you, if you've got a $10,000 bill that's coming due, and you've got 1000 put back for it, and let me help you, you're 9000 short. But what can happen to that 1000 It can multiply. Yeah, but it won't happen overnight. Yeah, and you'll have what you say. I don't know if it'll multiply overnight. I don't know if you'll get a hundredfold back in a night. But here's what I know. You, if you agree with God, you will get that back in your life. God will never leave you in a deficit. Amen. Amen. John 14, and I'll be done, I think. 
done till next Sunday. John 14 and verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the work's sake. If, if you don't believe I am who I said I am because I said it, believe me because you see the works. Amen. See, the Holy Spirit orchestrates things. We had those testimonies tonight, and if you don't believe God for any other reason, believe God because He did it for your brother or sister. Amen. If He did it for them, He'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So if God brought me out of debt in nine months, can God bring you out of debt in nine months? Can He? Right? Can you agree with that? If, 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 if God healed Anthony and Kevin and, and Michelle and other people in here, if God healed them, can God heal you? Yeah. you? You just got, because they're here, they don't lie, right? You know them, they lie not. <laughs> Amen? You saw Melanie up here with tears, believing God for things. Did she get them? Can you believe God because he did it for her? He said, if you don't believe me because of what I said, believe me for the works. You got to agree with God. Amen. That's why, and and I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. That's why when God tells your pastors and tells your leaders that this is the direction we're going. Your job's just get an agreement. Not to sit back and say, I don't know how that's going to happen. That's called dead weight. <laughs> Amen. You just agree with it. That's what I do. My pastor called me some time ago and told me some things they were, going, they were believing God for. And I said, okay, I just got an agreement. You know, they, 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 they had to upgrade a lot of things on, their, on the television network. And it wasn't just thousands, it was millions. Right. And it blessed me so much. We, we were at lunch, and uh, he was talking to Michelle and I, him and Sister Jeannie, and he made the statement, that the, that the station manager there, the, the, the general manager, was talking. They were talking about different ways uh, to work on the money. And he said, finally, I just looked at everybody and I said, okay, you know, I have, and they weren't saying anything wrong. Don't misunderstand me. But he said, I appreciate all this. He said, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do what I've always done. I'm just going to believe God. I'll just use my faith to get it. Man, that inspired me. Inspired me so much I sowed $20,000 into it. Amen. 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 And God paid my television bill. Amen. And, and God redid my church. <laughs> Amen. And God let me give all my employees bonuses. Amen. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? I'm telling you that because if you don't believe it for any other reason, believe it because I'm telling you it happened. Hallelujah. And so I'll tell you that the instruction to me is the instruction to you. If one dream has been supplied, now you've got to dream a bigger dream. Now you got to get a bigger plate. And I told you this morning when we watched the word that was spoken over my life, that if that was spoken to the head, it's spoken to the body. Mm. 
And if I can say it this way, what gets on daddy gets on the kids. Ha, ha, ha. So you might think God's asking you to do a lot, but you got a bigger plate, so it's all good. Amen. Amen. You watch, and I'm telling you this by the Spirit of the Lord. You do whatever you want to do with it. By the time I come back next Sunday, there's going to be, there's going to be testimonies of financial deliverance. Mark it down. You mark it down. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I will be asking. I will be asking Sunday morning. Amen. Why would you ask? Because I believe God. There's not one good word from God that's ever come into my life that's fell to the ground. Not one word that comes out of God's mouth will fall to the ground. It will accomplish what God promised. It will accomplish what God said. Amen. Amen. I see that in the Spirit. Let me share this with you. I, I was running in the park the other day alone. I was running. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just going to start calling Jamie to come run with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at Jamie. He goes, I don't agree. I, I, don't, I don't agree. <laughs> Now you watch. From now on, when I call him, it'll be like. <laughs> Your call has been transferred to a voicemail. Uh, this isn't Jamie. I have a praise report, but it's not me. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, I was running. And there's an oak tree in Shawnee Mission Park that's ministered to me for how long, Jim? Ten years? Nine years. I remember back one summer, I think it was about 2013 or 14. Oh, it was hot. I mean, Kansas is always hot. But it was like hot. It was so hot, the trees were dropping their leaves. It was hot. We had a, we had a, day, we had a week where it was like 105 every day. It was hot. And I'd run by that oak tree. And here stood that big oak tree. It had to be 150 years old or more. Green flourishing, thriving. And I noticed down behind that oak tree, about a quarter of a mile or so, was a pond. And the scripture came to me. He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. All the trees around it were dropping leaves, and that oak was just standing there beautiful. Well, anyway, that, that, so that it's ministered to me over the years. And every time I run by it, I'll either slow, by or slow down or I'll even stop, and I'll say, Lord, thank you, that's Philip and Michelle. We flourish. Well, the other day I was, I was running, and I stopped Saturday morning, and I stopped, and I was looking at that tree, and I looked up at that tree, and immediately I was in the Spirit. And I saw that tree. I saw that tree shoot up. And it was like full of all kind of vibrancy and colors. And you've ever seen an ancestry tree where they draw the lines and they come up like this? And I started seeing those lines come out of that tree. And I saw different departments of our church. Children's department, youth department, finances, television, different departments, FBIMA, school, all these different things. And I saw them just flourishing and thriving. And I heard this voice. It, 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 it was the voice of the Lord. And I know a little bit what the prophets would say, that when the Lord would speak to them, they would just feel like jello on the inside. And, and, and it, was, it was loud, but it was loud in my spirit. And I heard these words. You are connected to the branch Christ Jesus. You must flourish. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you are connected to the branch Christ Jesus. And you must Flourish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that settles it. We flourish. Hallelujah. Let's stand up tonight. As you're standing up, say it out loud. I agree with what I heard. I agree with the Word of God. I agree. With what was spoken. I flourish. I flourish. I flourish. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen, 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 amen. Well, of course, don't forget Wednesday evening. Uh, we'll have a wonderful time of ministry here. And then, of course, we'll be back with you Sunday morning. And then we'll all be going to Raytown Sunday night. And so praise the Lord. God's good to us. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, come on, say it with me tonight, would you? The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.